Welcome back to the Cannabis Investor web, webcast. Uh, thank you for attending the Cannabis Investor webcast where cannabis companies increase their liquidity, awareness, and exposure to individual and institutional investors, cannabis entrepreneurs, media, and consumers. We would like to thank our sponsors, American Green Incorporated, uh, and also Indo Expo Trade Show, which will be held in Denver, Colorado, November 15th through the 16th. Uh, the website address is www.indoexpoco.com. Again, www.indoexpo.com. Uh, our speaker today uh, is Corey Hollister, from CEO of American Cannabis Company and Trent Wolovec, COO of American Cannabis Company. And now I will make uh, you guys a presenter. So give me a second. Okay, Corey and Trent, I think uh, you guys are on. All right, good, good afternoon everybody. And it's our pleasure to be able to share our story uh, with with the world, uh, both investors on the on the retail and on the institutional side. So, uh, without further ado, I will jump in with with Corey, our CEO, as well. Hey everyone, how are we doing today? Corey Hollister, a pleasure to be here. So, with, without further ado, we'll we'll jump right into the investor presentation. We are American Cannabis Company allowing uh, individual entrepreneurs and businesses and assisting them with growing the next frontier. Uh, our our OT, OTCQB ticker symbol for the time being is BIMI. We're under Brazil Interactive Media, however, we are in the process of switching that over to American Cannabis, which we will discuss uh, further in the presentation. Uh, this is our safe harbor statement. We'll jump right into the presentation. Everybody, Corey Hollister here. So a little bit about the company uh, founded uh, by myself and my founding partner, Ellis Smith. Uh, we're both veterans of the regulated cannabis market uh, beginning in 2010 here in Colorado, uh, owned and operated. Uh, founded the consulting company in 2013 and quickly uh, began working not only here in Colorado, but in uh, the rest of the country uh, and uh, uh, additionally the world as well. So a little bit more about our public uh, market snapshot. As I alluded to earlier, as of now we are trading under BIMI Brazil Interactive Media. Um, we launched the company in 2013. As of right now, we have uh, about 40 million shares outstanding uh, and, and you can see the rest of the information. As I alluded to earlier, uh, we received uh, the merger con consummation from the SEC and are in, in final um, you know, discussions and, and in the process of getting the, the name change as well as the ticker change uh, through FINRA. We will be able to disclose and um, you know, talk about in in uh, in more detail specific financials uh, as we come up to to the third quarter and finalizing the the merger uh, with with the outstanding um, entity as well. So, just a little bit on uh, what's going on from a market perspective now. Um, <laughs> Obviously, uh, as I alluded to, uh, when we founded the consulting company, uh, we began uh, really expanding our reach uh, both nationally and globally, as well as uh, what we're offering in these markets uh, from the consulting and services, uh, as well as products. Uh, from a uh, macro level, we're seeing uh, some different things uh, occur. One. Uh, more legislative action is being taken uh, by the states, uh, preemptive to ballot initiatives. Uh, we do also see a number of ballot initiatives uh, continuing to uh, make it onto the uh, the voting sessions, and uh, we're seeing uh, the the growth of both the medical and the rec side. 
specifically here in Colorado uh, with the, the REC market, uh, there's been a number of positive indicators. We had a record uh, winter tourism season, uh, a record number of submiss submissions to colleges and universities. Uh, MSN Money uh, named us one of the top business economies, so doesn't uh, seem to be any negative impact from a, uh, a business perspective in terms of companies locating here. And we're also seeing some downticks in uh, violent crime and traffic accidents. So a little bit more about and around the market sediment from a, a, a macro level. Um, obviously, with with ACC's position in many states, uh, nine states around the U.S. and uh, one client up in Canada, one of 13 national producers up there, ACC gets to have a very unique view in what we see go on uh, not only in each individual state or up in Canada at, or at a, a global level. So therefore, we, we get to have the, the view of, of being kind of the, the front end or the bellwether uh, of the cannabis uh, industry as a whole, being able to see and understand uh, when states are, are starting to implement programs or are going to be going through uh, and, and developing a program, we are, are the first kind of line of, of contact. So um, with, with that being said, we've seen a lot of, of favorable legislation as well as uh, just general uh, public opinion coming to, to light over the past really 12 to 18 months. Um, as everybody I'm sure knows, uh, this is now being called, uh, you know, the the next dot com uh, kind, kind of wave and, and so uh, with both the public opinion flipping from uh, a, a negative or no I don't think any part of cannabis should be legal now to yes it should be legal um, this is opening a huge um, market of, of possible investments whether it's um, you know in, into the actual plant itself or, or ancillary businesses um, and, and we're seeing you know, a huge shift um, in, in just kind of who is going to be moving forward. Recently, the, the DEA requested uh, the FDA to look at rescheduling the, uh, the drug, uh, so moving it away from a, a Schedule 1, which would then open up a, a lot more, uh, you know, opportunities for, for the industry as well as uh, two key pieces of legislation that have been passed through the House, both around the banking as well as uh, allowing the states to kind of set up and run their, their own programs. So a quick snapshot here of what we offer as a company and our goal is really to be able to offer a integrated B2B solution for these companies, take them from inception uh, to the bank, cradle to bank, as we'll sometimes term it. And that often begins with a application in a merit-based market, um, but could also include working with a company that is currently operating in a regulated market. Uh, and uh, supporting them both through our services division uh, as well as our products division. So we're looking to provide a number of different touch points and ways in which we can support and interact with our clients. Just uh, kind of continuing on what is often the initiation of this process and uh, that being the application uh, and really what we look for uh, as we are uh, working with clients in these markets. So the trend has been towards markets uh, putting limited license uh, programs in place and having these be merit-based applications. A number of criteria uh, will be scored uh, with uh, the best and strongest candidates getting the opportunity to operate within the state. And the things that we're looking for is the strength of that management team, uh, their capitalization, that they are members of the community or can uh, <laughs> pull together the appropriate community support. They've been able to get their location 
And uh, the final piece, and which is the piece that we really bring to the table, and that's what the states want to see, is the ability to, to execute here. Uh, in this picture, you'll, you'll, you'll see one of our clients. Now, he's actually submitting for three separate locations. Um, but depending on how these state programs run, it can be uh, quite an extensive uh, process. And then on the opposite end of the scale, you'll see states uh, strictly limit the amount of content that can be produced. So us as a consultant really need to work with the client to deliver uh, the most effective merit-based application for what the state is looking for. And just to kind of further off on, on this in terms of what we see as the kind of critical pieces that the, the states are looking for and these uh, demonstrated experience was the last one uh, that I kind of touched on there, um, that they have the ability to establish operations quickly. Uh, right now, many of these states, uh, especially with uh, the uh, benefits that they're seeing for childhood epilepsy, uh, are looking to uh, get emergency programs in place. And uh, <clears throat> then they want to understand that you can operate these facilities with, uh, without the risk of mitigation and diversion, and that you can produce product uh, that meets the consumer safety and testing that they're looking to develop. And, and, and just to, to, to continue to, to um, you know, expand on, 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 on what Corey has said, um, these are kind of the, the, the three pe or the, excuse me, the five pieces that, that we can bring to the table for um, what our clients are, are looking for in, in being able to build out a, a, a medical cannabis business uh, in, in all these states. So uh, doc, Dr. Karen Mancasey, which you can see a quote on the side there, uh, she is actually the first MD in the country to hold a majority license um, in, the, in, the, in the U.S. Um, and she actually is still one of nine businesses um, it left in, in, in Massachusetts that is going through the, the licensing yeah, application. And I'll, I'll correct that. There's 11. 11. So there's 11. So, you know, again, coming back to um, really ACC being the, the, the market leaders in, in helping expand uh, the, the business, uh, both getting through the application but then on into operations as well. So uh, just a little bit in terms of uh, our experience uh, in doing this, uh, you know, I touched on our experience as being owners and operators. Um, we've also uh, successfully secured uh, licenses for clients in these merit-based competitive markets. Uh, Trent, uh, Trent just uh, mentioned uh, Dr. Karen Muncasey in Massachusetts. Uh, we've been successful in Connecticut as well and have recently submitted in Nevada and Illinois. Uh, have operated in all of the uh, merit-based states since the states adopted to this uh, method for selecting who are they going to allow uh, to run these businesses in their markets. And again, uh, the things that they're really looking for at this time uh, that we touched on is that demonstrated experience, that ability to get operations established quickly. They're putting uh, benchmarks for when they want product to reach the consumers, uh, the ability to handle all of the mitigation and diversion risk, and also uh, we're seeing the testing requirements become uh, much more akin to what we see in other FDA regulated or traditional markets uh, so that that producer can uh, manufacture in a way that is going to meet uh, consumer safety requirements. So the, the final piece and, and really kind of the culmination of, of, of the process of, of ensuring that the patients of, of each state are able to uh, you know, receive the best pharmaceutical grade medicine that, that, it, that is required and, and can be produced uh, here in the States. Um, you know, our goal is really to be able to uh, provide that knowledge transfer and tools to, to be successful in diverting the, the risk and, and ensuring the success not only for, you know, our clients but for the, the state as a whole and then most importantly, the patients 
of that state. And so what we really try to help them do um, is come to market with uh, a speed solution that allows them to, once they get their license, be able to, to produce top grade medicine and, and really do what they, they promised within the application. Uh, we have fully developed a uh, you know, process to cultivate and both dispense um, can medical cannabis to allow um, the patients to, to get there as well as have the knowledge transfer and skill sets not come from you know, Colorado or come from California but, but really create and, and develop the, the local uh, economy, you know, whether that's in Illinois, whether that's in Nevada, whether that's, that's in Connecticut, Massachusetts, here in Colorado, uh, and so on and so forth, even up in, into Canada. So, And one thing I would just add uh, in, into this is that, uh, you know, we want to re remove what has been kind of a historical problem for these entities and that that's all of the, the knowledge lying within maybe one or two individuals within the organization. So our uh, goal is to mitigate that risk as these companies transition from uh, what is a cottage industry essentially here in Colorado to a much more uh, uh, institutional sized industry with uh, limited licenses. If uh, Illinois in the 20s versus Denver has uh, 1,500 uh, cultivators. So the size and scale of these operations has grown exponentially and uh, therefore their needs have grown along with that and we're looking to meet the needs of these operations to develop a protocol based workflow that we can efficiently train local uh, people to take these jobs and run successful operations for our clients. So. Um that first half of, of the piece, as, as Corey had alluded to, uh, uh, of being able to be a fully integrated business-to-business -business solution is on the services side. And, and so what we see is, is um, different phases w within that process. However, there, there is a gap, and, and obviously once the consumer or, or client um, is ready to, to move into operations, uh, there's a whole slew of, of, of products um, that are that are needed outside of of the services to to become uh, you know up and running and be able to to produce and, and distribute the the medicine and and so um, the other half uh, of our business um, we are able to uh, kind of bring to fruition the products uh, aspect and and so what we've done is really create what's called a group purchasing organization to bring to market. Um, what what we feel are uh, the most innovative um, yet still pr uh, producing uh, products, whether that's from uh, lights, soil, uh, uh, how that how the methodology is being executed, and then all the way down to uh, gloves and, and toilet paper uh, and and so on and so forth. So uh, what we're able to do is develop and bring to our clients a full end-to-end -end supply chain solution tailored specifically for the cannabis industry. And I'll just add a couple uh, comments to what Trent uh, described there. Uh, so some, some of these products uh, were manufacturing in-house uh, and you know these are opportunities for where we saw that there was uh, holes in the market um, in terms of the solutions that were pre being provided provided either they were um, not meeting uh, the requirements that they needed or they were ineffective solutions um, you know then we have a, a set of products that we determine are our best in class and when we're going through the application process, we're going very deep into the design build of these facilities, um, uh, often to full uh, architectural and engineering plans and we're, having, we're making decisions about what are the best in class products to create these next wave state of the art facilities and really looking to push the envelope here, uh, adopt whatever we can from uh, existing uh, industries, be it agricultural or manufacturing, uh, integrate them into our industry 
and create an end product uh, for our clients that uh, is beyond what we're currently seeing existing in the marketplace. So this uh, product here, the Cultivation Cube, uh, again, uh, overcame uh, a number of issues that uh, we saw happening uh, within facilities. Uh, one from just globally bad uh, facility design rooms that uh, could not maintain environments, and that's where uh, all of your pest outbreaks will occur. Uh, this product uh, also has a number of uh, additional benefits. Uh, one, it's easily scalable, so as we're entering these new markets and the patient adoption rate is a bit of an unknown, and uh, it's hard for clients to estimate how much should they build, how fast. This is a way for them to uh, establish operations and scale up and down as the patient market uh, dictates. We also uh, really get a lean manufacturing benefit out of this product, so we're able to get a higher light density on a thousand square feet, it's going to equate to about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of increased revenue per year, and that's at a wholesale price of twenty five hundred dollars. So uh, conservative, or you know, on point for established markets, and that'll vary from market to market. You can also stack the cube, so vertical gain is another uh, big goal of the industry from a cultivation perspective. Uh, and then, as I kind of uh, indicated um, the reduction in risks not only from theft uh, but also uh, pest and disease by being able to strictly control the environments. We are very excited to uh, begin working with Dixie Elixirs uh, with this product and uh, made our first delivery and install there uh, just recently and we'll uh, be uh, continuing in that relationship and is a strong product for many of these emerging markets. This product, uh, the Sohum Living Soil, uh, again, when we look at these things, we're, we're looking at these uh, entities from a macro level and determining how can we solve uh, what are some of the biggest risk factors. So one of the things that you'll often see as being very problematic is uh, nutrient mixes um, not being done properly and having... Uh, big stressors introduced into the crop and uh, a 10 percent shift in yield on a thousand lights uh, can be is, is a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in revenue so the margin for error is very low um, this product uh, contains all of the nutrients uh, that the plant needs within the soil so it's considered a biodynamic growing or super soil and it uh, has a number of benefits, not only that reduced operator error in that the plant is uh, dictating what it needs for nutrients and how much. It's uh, uh, more, uh, uh, there's an increased savings over traditional nutrient regimens by about a, a factor of a third. Uh, and it's an organic-based product. So we're producing uh, organic, uh, cons you know, pharmaceutical quality grade medicines at a reduced cost and this becomes uh, especially uh, important as these new markets adopt more stringent testing requirements uh, and, and we know that uh, a lot of the nutrient regimens and pesticides currently in use will not uh, pass the type of consumer testing that uh, is looking to be applied to our industry. And, uh, one verification of that recently, our client in Canada, Organigram, uh, which is governed by Health Canada and has uh, really one of the most developed and stringent uh, testing um, programs uh, running uh, the Sohum Living Soil. They uh, successfully passed uh, testing and uh, got their product to the patients in Canada and were the first to do so with zero radiation. So. Uh, some of the ways that other companies are treating their products is introducing radiation as well as other harmful con uh, contaminants. The, uh, the next kind of product that, that we've been able to, to bring to market and, and, and fill uh, what was a gap uh, that, that we saw exist both, both here in Colorado and, and will continue to be uh, in, in every new market moving forward um, is the satchel and, and the, what the satchel uh, it, represents is an ASTM approved 
a mechanism to allow a child-resistant packaging uh, mechanism to, to have the uh, patient leave the store and, and not have to worry about um, either a child or, or a pet getting, getting into the package. And so what we saw as a, a, a gap in, in really not really too many products in the marketplace, we've been able to uh, develop a design to uh, meet, meet the requirements of, of not only the, the market, but at a broader uh, poison prevention uh, packaging control act that, that's been implemented uh, both in the cannabis space, but as well as the, the pharmaceutical space as well. So um, we were able to develop this product and allow really branding something that, that wasn't allowed uh, or, or really done on any existing product we've been able to, to bring that to market and, and you can kind of see an example uh, of that uh, with, with a, 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 dis, a dispensary here locally in, in Denver, Colorado. And, and so um, the market uh, in, in general here in Colorado has been very receptive uh, to, to this uh, child resistant packaging and we're now looking to, to continue to expand it and be able to provide the solution to uh, every new market as well as uh, you know international markets as well across across the world and I just would uh, highlight what I think is really a key point that Trent hit on in the end and that is the, the branding uh, that we are now able to do with this product so we took what was essentially a requirement uh, for these uh, retailers to comply with and uh, turned it into a benefit for them. You know, now they're able to comply with the regulatory side, but they're also uh, furthering and increasing their marketing presence, their branding. They have uh, the, the competitive product to this was a plastic-based uh, product, um, not very uh, appealing for a consumer. Um, and this has really transitioned uh, this requirement for retailers into a benefit uh, and uh, as Trent alluded to, the reception has been fantastic. So just a little bit about uh, kind of the team and, and how we approach things here and, and I think this is very critical and it's one of the things that uh, often separates us from our competitors and just you know what makes another consulting company uh, and, you know, first and foremost, it's uh, that the, the core team members uh, have uh, both industry experience but also uh, professional backgrounds and experience uh, in other verticals and other areas. Um, as we develop the company, uh, so as you can see here on this first slide, myself and my founding partner, uh, Ellis Smith, uh, and uh, I've come out of a corporate um, advertising and marketing background, uh, Ellis uh, Horticultural and also uh, ski, ski and film uh, production, uh, but uh, really uh, through the horticultural experience was able to uh, develop and, and refine what uh, was common in Europe, this biodynamic style of growing and bring it here into the U.S. market um, so that we transition away from uh, what is considered uh, cash cropping towards uh, uh, having the patient-centric approach, the consumer in mind, and producing pharmaceutical-grade medicines. As we kind of evolved through the company, uh, we needed uh, to, you know, the human capital component uh, really became critical and we needed to round out the team and it was uh, really with people with backgrounds in other key uh, critical areas. So Trent, who's here with me today, uh, a healthcare and supply chain management uh, background and uh, I think obviously as he's touched on a number of the products, uh, you know, the value of that comes through. Uh, another uh, person highlighted here is Anthony uh, Baroud, who brings 35 years of construction and engineering. He uh, holds uh, a number of patents uh, personally, and as we've developed into uh, creating these next generation of facilities, um, you know the the complexity and the engineering required for them has uh, grown and. 
Uh, so we're really looking to have all of these components in place for the client so that wherever their pain point is, that we have a level of expertise that we can bring to bear for that client. And just a recap on kind of the uh, entire presenta uh, presentation here. As I mentioned, we're, we're seeing two things uh, happen, both uh, states in, uh, opting to take legislative action and looking to really control how these programs are rolled out in their state. Uh, and then we do continue to see uh, ballot initiatives, and uh, those are picking up in the recreational side of things. Um, <coughs> Trent uh, indicated uh, that the DEA has uh, requested the FDA to uh, examine a reclassification. So not only does that uh, make it a friendlier market, easier for banking uh, to be involved, but it also really opens the door for uh, research, which will bring you know brings us to our next point there, and that's biotechnology. And we foresee and we're seeing it already a uh, diversion between the uh, medical cannabis and the recreational cannabis markets, and that bio and that medical cannabis uh, really going down the pathway of biotechnology, where uh, you know isolating compounds and reconstituting them and uh, creating targeted medicines uh, is the direction that these companies will be going in, uh, and then. Uh, on the recreational side, uh, you know, the uh, <coughs> states becoming more comfortable with this, uh, seeing what's happened in Colorado and Washington, seeing, you know, the positive impacts and uh, not significant negative impacts, uh, that their comfort level is going to come up and we think uh, uh, the uh, citizens in, in, within those states, uh, their, their opinion is shifting and those will get pushed up. Uh, for us, uh, you know, what this means is, you know, really the opportunity for uh, both the services we provide, but then the products we provide is continuing to grow in line with that uh, national action and then uh, really international. So uh, we're already working in uh, Canada and then our, have our eyes on uh, and transitioning to some of these developing markets. Um, both in uh, you know the Caribbean and South America as well as Europe, um, pot tourism uh, you know in line with the, the uh, recreational viewpoint. Uh, and as I touched on, uh, you're you're seeing uh, some uh, corollary benefits in terms of a record uh, winter tourism see, uh, season here. Uh, and obviously the sales numbers from the recreational program here in Colorado, sales tax numbers, uh, and then we're starting to see uh, uh, really uh, concepts and um, <coughs> entities looking to target this vertical uh, directly. So to, to wrap everything up, why invest in American Cannabis Company? So you are able to invest in what is a rapidly expanding market. And, and so what, what we've seen happen from 2013 to 2014 um, is, is very expansive growth. And then where we think it will be uh, you know, into 2015 and 2016, uh, continuing to, to, to run up, uh, almost doubling on an annual basis to, to where it should be. Uh, an estimated six billion dollar industry as a, as a whole. Um, so, you know, as we kind of alluded to earlier and, and throughout the presentation, uh, BIMI or, or, or American Cannabis Company is really the ability to invest in the space without having to touch the plant. We're not limited to uh, state by state restriction. Uh, we are involved in all aspects of the industry without uh, having to compromise any uh, regulatory laws, uh, both at a state level and at a federal level. Uh, we have a, an existing pipeline. So uh, contracts, as I alluded to, uh, in, in many of the states that have programs and operations in place, as well as being able to capitalize on the market uh, once it transitions into full operations 
uh, from the, the product side as well as being able to really recognize that reoccurring revenue that, that is going to be happening uh, with, with businesses uh, all over the, the country and, and up in, in worldwide. Um, and what we've been able to establish so far with a lot of our preferred partners, uh, Dix, Dixie being one of them, Organogram being one of them, are really mature businesses in the marketplace that will continue to grow um, both here in Colorado, up in Canada, and then when the time is right, expand nationally. So we've been able to uh, partner with who we feel is uh, be best in class uh, in, in their respective areas. So again, reoccurring revenue models, um, being able to recognize uh, fees from a revenue perspective for a business, uh, you know, through the application phase and then also after the application phase and into ongoing production, we've been able to uh, build out a solution uh, for each kind of state to, to recognize uh, you know, each market's uh, individual requirements. And then we're able to also just sell other proprietary uh, products and, and equipment in, into our clients to, to continue to ramp up the revenue uh, as we progress and mature as an industry as a whole. And I would just add uh, to kind of uh, what Trent summarized there is, you know, one of the things that really separates us we you know we see a lot of consulting companies and a lot of a lot of interest in the space and, and companies are are popping up constantly um, and somebody asked me you know what well what separates you guys from all of these other companies and it's really the track record and you know our track record um, as uh, being successful in these merit-based applications uh, to producing or uh, creating products that are filling needs in the market from the satchel to the cultivation cube, uh, you know, as really affirmed uh, through Dixie's interest in that product, through our soil, um, uh, you know, and being uh, really uh, uh, affirmed through it passing Health Canada testing. So, uh, you know, we are looking to uh, separate ourselves not only in the level of professionalism and the service we provide, but in the successes we bring to this market uh, as it grows here, um, you know, from today forward. And so, um, what, what we have here is uh, contact information for, for anybody that, that has questions either around the, the market as a whole or, or specifically around uh, in investing in the companies. Uh, what I would like to do now is, is turn it back over to uh, Derwin and, and allow for some, some Q&A. Thanks. Uh, so give me about 30 seconds to queue up the questions. The first question is, can cannabis grown in one state be exported to another? So here in the United States, uh, cannabis is not allowed to be crossed through straight state lines. However, recently in Utah, um, they have allowed 11 families to uh, be able to, to drive across uh, to, to pick up medicine for, for their ill children. Um, however, that, that is just a one example that we've seen um, you know, happened over over the past cu couple couple months. Internationally, in Canada, you are able to import and export products up there. So uh, again, it, it is very different. Um, you know, between the U.S. And, and Canada. Again, Canada is federally legal, so they are able to uh, disperse products uh, throughout the whole country as well as into international markets that have uh, legislation in place. And one of the things that is occurring here that might be causing some market confusion is that uh, refined CBD oils are being imported from China and other countries that are produced from hemp uh, and being sold uh, as medicines uh, you know, on a national basis. Uh, unfortunately, the efficacy of those, uh, you know, is a big question, 
and uh, you know people who are seeking uh, treatment, um, you know, for for sick individuals uh, may not be getting the product that they ultimately are seeking. Okay. Next question: What lighting does the cultivation cube use? What lighting? Yes. So that that is an an option. So uh, you know we can uh, put LED. Uh, you know. Currently, it uses a uh, uh, E Papillon is the the brand of the the fixture. Uh, it's a thousand watt bulb. Um, it, it you know depending on what the client is interested in, we can design different photometric plans. We can utilize 600 watt light photometric plans, LED photometric plans. So uh, there's kind of where our best in class recommendation may be, and then we're flexible. Uh, in terms of client-specific requirements or desires, and, and I think it's important for for everybody to to, to know and understand um, both, you know, from an investor perspective and uh, client perspective is we, we at ACC are solution agnostic. So um, you know, we we want to develop and be able to partner with our clients uh, in any and every market. We make recommendations. Uh, we have uh, a feel and understanding that, that we are able to provide what is best in class and is uh, you know, produced on, on the scale that, that we expect. However, um, if, if there's something else out there that um, they want or they need uh, specific to, to them, we are able to, to provide them that service and or that product. So, and, and I think LEDs would be a great example if, if somebody really feels, uh, you know, uh, strongly about the environmental impact, uh, they may be uh, wanting to utilize that technology. Okay, next question is, what is the cost of a cube and what is its output? What is the cost of a so, cube? Uh, you got the yep. So, so the, the cost of the cube uh, it, it really depends uh, around what, uh, you know, how many and how, how big of a scale is. We are asking uh, retail prices is, is $45,000. Uh, what, what we have included in there is HVAC, the lights, uh, a closed loop uh, system around, uh, you know, air conditioning and so on and so forth. Fire suppression. Fire suppression. Uh, safety safety code lights. Uh, the, uh, again, we have a video online. Um, it, it's on our website. It's also posted in this uh, presentation. So, uh, if if you're wanting more information, you can also email us uh, around kind of what is uh, a fully component uh, piece uh, uh, of the cube. And I I would just kind of uh, address that and, you know, try to hit most on the critical items on some level uh, because uh, there's a lot of variability in the client uh, if they have a cultivator that grows in a specific methodology. Uh, we have the ability to provide them with a more complete product uh, that would include uh, all of the irrigation system, uh, our soil if they wanted to operate the soil. Uh, and uh, we'll structure these into modules so that the vegetative container and the flowering container are all one loop system, uh, creating a very efficient workflow. Um, so uh, there's, a, there's, you know, we've taken it to the point where we want to leave ourselves the option for that, that client to select um, based on what their end goals are, uh, and then just, uh, you know, if you do the cost benefit over. Uh, stick builds and traditional building, uh, you know, you're uh, quickly going to recoup that uh, if, you know, if they're pretty close, but any additional upfront cost, uh, you know, a single extra harvest or the increased light density, uh, either one of those uh, within their, on their own would overcome that and combined will significantly uh, overcome uh, the additional cost over a, a stick build. Uh, one other major uh, benefit that many people like is the ability for these units to be moved. So uh, you may end up in a, a landlord situation where they have a bank loan and uh, uh, you know they need to move buildings or for whatever reason they're looking to relocate. 
if they have in, invested $2 million of tenant improvements into that building, uh, they have much more flexibility to take their operations and reestablish them at another facility. So that flexibility is another big benefit um, for people as they operate in this space. Next question. Does the SOHUM Living Soil require a specific fertilization program? Also, how many cultivation cycles can a SOHUM batch be used for? So the SOHUM Living Soil uh, is a 16-week soil, and uh, it's what we would call a charged soil. So it has all of the nutrient requirements for the plant within that soil. Uh, even then, uh, we recognize uh, that uh, some people will want to drive the cannabis plant uh, even harder in terms of uh, what we term as maximum genetic potential. So we have uh, uh, means uh, within the, pro uh, the workflow that are, are very simple in terms of compost teas uh, and top dressing uh, if people are looking to uh, either one, uh, you know, just really optimize or if there is a corrective action that is required. But uh, for the majority of users, it's a just add water soil. Uh, you don't need to do anything else. Uh, we do recommend that it's reverse osmosis water because we have a living micro life in that uh, soil and that's really what is breaking down the nutrients and causing, creating all that benefit. That soil can be recycled. Uh, however, when you recycle, uh, you need to rebuild the, the substrate, that's the, uh, just the amount of aeration uh, within the soil, and uh, reintroduce uh, fertilizers that were uh, uptake, uptaken by the plant during the cultivation uh, cycle. And we have uh, uh, products um, you know, that are, and methods for doing that recycling and uh, rebuilding of the soil for clients that are interested in implementing those programs. And that creates a uh, massive potential cost savings for operators as they continue in this industry. Next question, is your company profitable at this time? If not, when do you expect to be profitable? So uh, we, we will be disclosing our, uh, you know, financials uh, coming very shortly. We have had made the decision going through uh, just our, our, our filings with the SEC to uh, not, not disclose that at this time. However, it, it will be discussed uh, in, in length uh, in, in the very near term. If if they want to, to if an investor wants to, to gain more information around um, you know the the difference between the operating entity that was Brazil Interactive Media and American Cannabis Company, uh, they they are more than welcome to uh, review our 14C, which uh, has it broken out uh, by each operating division. Last question. Uh, what type of investments are you looking for? Through simple stock purchase or are you just looking for clients? So uh, we, we, are, we are looking for, for both. Um, you know, we, we, we are, uh, as we've alluded to throughout, uh, you know, this, uh, this presentation, uh, we feel like we are in a, a great position um, both here local or here domestically as well as internationally uh, from being able to assist uh, individual entrepreneurs or businesses looking to uh, break into the space. Uh, however, you know, as we've become um, you know, more and more uh, mature in, in, in the public market arena, uh, we are absolutely uh, looking for uh, individual retailer investors and or institutional investors uh, moving forward. I will say uh, at this time, uh, with with the help of of, of the injection uh, from from Duchess, who's been a, a great partner uh, of ours, uh, you know, working through the uh, the the public side um, and, and getting that up and up and running, uh, we are very well positioned from a capital a capital perspective to uh, invest in the growth needed for uh, our business, as well as uh, really. 
leveraging organic growth uh, that, that we've recognized uh, just through the natural progression uh, of our business and the success of our clients in, in, in every market. Um, so we, we're, we're in a very uh, good position uh, fr from, from that aspect. Thank you. That concludes our Q&A session. Uh, for any questions that we did not get a chance to answer, uh, I will submit those questions to Corey and Trent, uh, and uh, they will answer those questions, and we will either, either post those questions uh, and answers on our website, or we will email to you. If you uh, email me with the request, dawallace at cannawebcast.com. Corey and Trent, do you have any closing comments? Just uh, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, joining us today, and uh, we look forward to uh, continuing to interact here in, uh, as we progress in our company uh, moving forward. Thank you, Corey and Trent. I